Welcome back, guys, with the Remote Dual TCZ Invitational Europe. So we are here with uh, round two. So the second match of our top 16 uh, is uh, on its way. It's, uh, it's definitely going to be a, an exciting uh, road ahead. We already spoiled the name for you guys uh, before while we were waiting in the middle of the last match, which saw Daniel Hartmann be the first of our players to advance to day two, because he will play tomorrow, and to the top eight. So now we are going to find out who his opponent is going to be. But before talking about the decks in the specifics and what they are playing, I want to show you guys what we have prepared just for the other guys. So we have an interview for both of the players. Let's hear them for the guys themselves. So as uh, the first, uh, we are going to see, uh, just like before, who do you think uh, of the two is the favorite? I never picked the, the right one, so I don't know what to okay, say. Okay, yeah, that's <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> because, yeah, no, guys, I want to remind you that we have the world record for the, <laughs> the uh, lose of the favorite of a streamer. So... Alberto picked Leonardo for the winner of his event and uh, if you need a charm for good luck do not pick this okay. guy because he was lost in round one but now we are ready with the interview from the first of our players so let's bring it up on the screen I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for around five or six years I started around 2015 when my parents first took me to a locals the first deck I played was Noble Knights from the Noble Knights of the Round Table structure deck it was admittedly quite a basic list because my deck building was bad at the time, but it was fun. My favourite card is probably Azolde, Two Tales of the Noble Lights. It gives lots of options to one of my, fo my first deck, Noble Lights, and it gives a lot of options to warrior-based strategies, which I enjoy playing. I'm playing Virtual World for this event because I believe it's, aside from True King of Calamities, which is an amazing card, it's got good disruption and it's got a very strong engine. My fondest memory that involves Yu-Gi-Oh! is probably YCS London. It was great to experience doing well with YCS and I got to meet so many amazing people because of it. Nice, uh, nice to hear him from Benjamin. Uh, definitely London is one of the favorite events for a lot of people, I would say. Uh, we have it inside the ECM and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's one of the best events for me as well because you get to enjoy, first of all, London, which is an incredible city. And uh, also, if uh, you happen to not do too well at the event, uh, you can also go around at the Comic-Con, which is uh, always uh, uh, an incredible event. He said that he's going to play Virtual World. Is he going to be happy with his opponent? I can tell you guys, it's, it's going to be a Virtual World mirror match, but let's hear it from Danilo himself. Uh, how long have I been involved with the Yuga training card game? I believe I started in 2017 again. Um, I knew the show, I watched the show when I was little, uh, and some days a, a friend of mine came and he said, I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh, do you want to play as well? And I'm like, sure, yeah. And from then on I just picked up more decks and started playing on higher level tournaments, and uh, <laughs> that's how I got here. What was the first deck I played? I believe it was Ritual Beast. Um, I, th I think. Either that or Crystron. And those are both two of my favorite decks of all time. <laughs> some, of them might, some of my friends might disagree, but I really love those decks. Do I have a favorite card? Um, that's interesting. I have a lot of favorite cards, but I, if I have, if I had to just choose one favorite card, it will probably be Kriston Corion Gandrex, the boss monster of the Kriston deck, because I, I think it's just a really good card, and I've won a lot of games using that card. Uh, what deck am I playing? I'm playing Virtual World. Um, it's the deck I've tested the most uh, the past couple of months. It's also the deck I've used to uh, do well in both the Remote Duel Extravaganza and the Interpretation of Qualifier. So I think it's just a logical choice for me to continue playing Virtual World. What is my fondest memory of, of Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, that's also an interesting question. If I had to think back, it would probably be like doing so well at high level tournaments with my Crystal deck. I just loved playing it and I got, got a lot of people off guard just playing it and it was just a very fun time. Okay, so 
definitely a good contender and as expected uh, he mentioned he has been playing the deck uh, for a while he won his spot uh, for the qualification here today so he's uh, it's gonna be a fun uh, mirror match here they have taken different approaches i gotta say one playing uh, uh quite more end traps so danilo is playing uh, artifact lancia in the main deck which is an incredible decision for the mirror but his opponent is playing triple tactic talent so What's going to be better, we are going to find out, but our players are ready, so let's just jump into action. Okay, okay. so right now I think the, the die roll will be, will be relevant, because, um, I mean, starting second in a virtual world winner match is not that great, but as you were saying before, uh, the two players decided to play different approaches, so on one hand we have... Uh, a lot of different hand traps, and on the other hand, we have the triple tactic talents. If yeah. uh, if he comes up, it will be huge. Again, they they qualified uh, in different tournaments, just like before. So Benjamin uh, uh, used the UK qualifier, and he got all the way up to the final, where he lost. While his opponent uh, Danilo got third place uh, in the French qualifier. So uh, definitely different approaches. They have not played each other yet, but. Uh, we'll see uh, who is going to advance. Uh, do you think the die roll is, uh, is quite important, uh, even if they are playing 12 uh, Anthrops each? What do you think? Yeah, I think in the mirror match, uh, stroking of Calamity is, is okay, but it's not that relevant. I mean, it, it's of course a strong card, but uh, going second, I mean, anyway, you could have problems. So if you win the die roll, it's better anyway to go first. So yeah. Looks like Robinson won the die roll. I would say so as well. So he's expected to go first, but regardless, uh, we are gonna see a, a mirror, probably a, a free game one. So let's see if Danilo is able to pick up one of his attached cards and maybe the Lancia itself. Okay, we finally get to see the new card, Pot of Prosperity, which is a free off in both of uh, our guys uh, this weekend, so... Yeah, this is an incredible card release in Blazing Vortex, and uh, I think in this card, in this deck, you have to play the Pot of Prosperity. It's very good, because uh, you got to see six fresh cards and you select one, basically, mm -hmm. and you add it to your hand. Yeah, it's uh, it reminds me a lot, of course, of Pot of Duality, as it was uh, back in the day. It was already quite powerful and it changed the game uh, and to see that such a card is released nowadays uh, can really show you how much the game has changed and uh, yeah it's uh, it's an incredible tool and it's also quite versatile first of all you get to pick what you banish it's not random uh, and uh, you also depending on the deck you're uh, playing may be banishing uh, three or six cards because some decks I, uh, I've seen it's more correct to just manage the free yeah. because you know you're playing a lot of touches, so it doesn't matter which one you get. But okay, teleport. It was the MVP uh, last round, and now uh, again uh, deciding to to show up. Yeah, and banishing six cards for virtual war is not a is not a big deal because you have the Nyanyan and you can shuffle back one of your cards whenever you want. So it's very powerful and. Uh... Now he added the Benjamin added the, the GG mm -hmm. with the teleport he gets the Nyanyan. Okay. So the only restriction is that uh, you cannot draw for effects for the rest uh, for the turn you activate it. So we have to keep that in mind because uh, there are other options to draw such as the Stardust Charge or the Troco Dragon we've seen uh, in round one. But for now, pretty straightforward. We're opening the Nyanyan as you said is summoned and now probably send the uh, Qinglong. What do you yeah, think? it could be it could be Shinglong. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, so for now standard, but uh, the Lancia should come down here if uh, if his opponent uh, has it. Let's see if he's thinking about uh, a response. Uh, I can tell you he's playing Nibiru as well in the main deck, so we should keep that in mind because he he might come down. Although this is one of the ends where uh, Benjamin could play around it maybe. Yeah, because uh, he could go for number 75, just in case his opponent has the mm -hmm. Nibiru. Uh, it's looking like Danilo doesn't have any response to the Shinglong, so maybe he could get a Lulu. Let's see if he maybe has, or, has it already or not. But very good opening for, uh, for Benjamin. 
Yeah, so solid, uh, solid stuff. Uh, the other Anthrops in Danilo deck are uh, uh, Lancia, as I mentioned, and Gamma and Ash as well. So a lot of options, but for now, not looking like he picked up uh, many of them. We'll see where he decides to use them. Yeah, again, uh, incredible start. Uh, uh, do you think he's gonna just go and uh, fetch uh, the uh, Chushe? Or, like... Ooh, where goes the Gamma? Okay, okay. The Gamma is there. He kept it for the Lulu. And uh, we'll see if that's gonna be enough to stop uh, Benjamin on his track. Yeah, I think this is a smart move because he waited, uh, he waited for Benjamin to activate all of his effects. And now he's only left with one card in hand. This means that yep. uh, it could be maybe out of uh, monsters. It's definitely interesting to see the last card because I believe he discarded the Lao Lao. Yeah. So the Lao Lao now would be good. Yeah, but it would be good. Yeah. If he doesn't have another in hand, uh, he might be in trouble. Let's see if he if he played greedy or if he was uh, smart to just consider a possible interruption. Because Lao Lao here would be really good. Let's see. Yeah, he could have uh, another card in his hand. Yeah, if it's like. An Anthrop, uh, it, I think it would be a shame, but yeah, okay, understandable. So he didn't have much of a decision, it's another one, so pretty, pretty uh, strong opening by Benjamin. He will be able to end up on the on a good and usual board right now, but let's see if there is yet another interruption by Danilo. Yeah, I think another good point of discussion could be keeping the Gamma for the turn after. If you pull that mm -hmm. the Calamities, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's also fair enough, uh, but... I mean, the advantage gets out of hand, and if he gets to add uh, uh, the trap, uh, then... I guess the Gamma is not enough to win yeah. the game uh, on his own, so... Uh, it's understandable that Danilo just wanted to prevent uh, some... Uh, advantage getting out of hand, so... Now we get to see the first uh, Synchro Summon of the duel. Is it gonna be the Shen Shen? No, it's the Vermilion. Okay. okay. For example, here it would be a big mistake to go for the Croco Dragon for getting about the restriction. Because, uh... Yeah, it needs to be careful. Mm -hmm. Is he thinking about Nibiru? It seems like Danilo is considering uh, something, so yeah, it might was, be. Uh, yeah, it might be. Yes, that would be. That, that would be, be wow. That would be dream man. I think so. Yes, wow! <laughs> what an opening from uh, Danilo. Not only Gamma, but Nibiru as well. And uh, yeah, what a way to start! Uh, he completely shuts down uh, everything coming from Benjamin, and this seems like it's uh, it's devastating. Yeah, I think this is what you really want to draw against uh, the mirror match, because he had the Gamma, he kept it for the proper moment, and then now the Nibiru completely shuts down Benjamin's strategy. Absolutely, so... Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't want to be in Benjamin, uh, Benjamin's shoes. Uh, we'll see, because now he has three cards in hand, so... It all depends on Danilo, if he has a way to combo off, then I don't see this uh, going well for, for Benjamin, but maybe he breaks uh, on Anthrops, <laughs> so let's see. And it's also quite relevant that the Nibiru is summoned uh, by tributing the driver, meaning the, the other Gammas in Danilo deck or end are also live later on. And yeah, this, uh, this is it, he gets a card back with Gigi, and uh, Danilo gets to play knowing that his opponent has no interaction whatsoever and the CD is a great way to start, so looking uh, like a phenomenal start from Danilo. Yeah, this is the dream hand. Uh, he, gets the, he gets the Shuche, so maybe he has another monster. He, gets, he has a monster for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense. Any monster here, you just send the Queen Long and... Yeah, so... not. Uh, the the yeah, it's not the best. Lao Lao at this moment it's not the best one, but uh, it's okay because yeah. Yeah, I mean any any monster. I mean you cannot be that greedy. I mean Gamma and Nibiru, so you cannot uh, be asking for much more. Uh, now he gets to banish, and uh, this is uh, this is a really uh, strong strong start. 
Uh, the only concern I have is uh, how he's thinking uh, about dealing with the Queen Long, because he needs to be careful about Queen Long negating his own cards. But outside of that, it's just really a way of uh, not saying that this game looks like it's gonna be won by Danilo. So he also had the Nyanyan to discard with the Chain so Yeah. Very good. Do you think he can push? For game here, it doesn't seem that complicated either. Yeah, if he I goes, think it could. I think it would. For like a Vermilion yeah, uh, on... Yeah, for Vermilion and maybe... Yeah. Because like, he can set up uh, a good field, but... Uh, I mean, the Chuche could uh, get rid of the Qinglong for the turn after. But uh, I think he has... He, he, could, he could have enough. Let's see if he manages to... To seal the game. Yeah, so the Nyan Nyan, I think it's quite easy to push uh, enough damage, to to be honest. Like, even if you just go for Vermilion, uh, I think, yeah, yeah. his opponent, uh, unfortunately, has seen enough. Uh, he doesn't want to lose any more time. Uh, and uh, Danilo convincingly takes uh, game one and advances only one game away from meeting uh, Daniel in the top eight uh, match. So now we take a look. Cut the side decks and um, what, what do you think if you are uh, if you're Benjamin? Like his end was actually quite good, but it was met with uh, with two end chops. Uh. Yeah, because this is not what you usually expect or what you usually see in a visual computer match. I mean, uh, everyone plays a lot of end traps, but uh, I think this combination Gamma on Lulu and then the Nibiru completely shut down Benjamin's strategy. So I mean, he doesn't have nothing to regret. Uh, Danilo had a very good hand. The, the proper responses at the, the proper moment and uh, for game two, what do you think uh, Benjamin? I mean, I think Benjamin... Hey, it's tough! Uh, this is what I was talking about uh, in round one. It reminds me a, a lot of the Goki mirror match in a way where you know your opponent is gonna bring so many Anthrops in that Sometimes it's better to let them start and just take advantage of yours, especially considering Benjamin was even maining the uh, free copies of Tactic Talents. Uh, he, he has in his side deck uh, Lancia, but he also plays uh, the Mischief of the Gnomes, uh, which is an interesting choice uh, since uh, you can send it with the Foolish Burial Goods as well. Uh, and it shuts down, uh, or well, it, it, it's pretty annoying to deal with for, uh, for the mirror. Uh, but man, uh, Danilo just even more uh, eight, I guess. He has so he's so prepared for the mirror. Yeah, I mean there are a lot of different hand traps, uh, the same ones. Okay. Oh, Danilo also has the triple tactic talent. So yeah, and triple ghost belt. Too. Yeah. So, so a lot of options, and I think he expects that he will go second. So I think uh, they will go in for sure. Yeah, I think he's gonna go even more aggressive on the Anthrop plan. Uh, that's why I would like Benjamin uh, to one-up him and uh, let Danilo start. It's something scary to do, but I think it can be very rewarding in this uh, in this instance. It's risky, but uh, it could pay off. Yeah, I I am a fan of that. So let's see who is gonna who is gonna approach it. Regardless, uh, I'm sure they will uh, prove, uh, just like in game one, that they are super comfortable with the compos. And... Uh... Yeah, now let's see. Ends are picked up, so... Mm -hmm. We will see if Benjamin decides to go first or second. Yeah, and as you can see, for any one of you guys, playing Yu-Gi-Oh! with your friends, uh, you can see on Danilo's side that he's using on his phone the Neuron app uh, by us, by Konami, uh, which uh, is a great uh, way to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2021. It uh, really helps out with a lot of uh, easy and uh, helpful and useful uh, features. So I really suggest you guys to download it and check out uh, because it, it makes Yu-Gi-Oh! just much, much easier and funnier. So. Again, we see a start, same as uh, game one. So uh, Benjamin, unfortunately, I don't know, decides to go first, uh, trying his, uh, his luck, and he opens with a uh, pot, which is pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, this is the, the start you really, you really want to see. 
Heart of Prosperity gives you a lot of different options and uh, to adjust your hand. And I don't think here really Danilo wants to respond. Yeah, okay. Absolutely not. So, what is he gonna pick up? Uh, we can see he kept a lot of the cars in. Oof, this is tough. Uh, there are a lot of ways. I mean, obviously, the first thing we cannot know is how good the end is already, because if he has cars to combo off, then even the, the tactic talents is, uh, is interesting, because. Unless a drone lock, uh, which really is not something you would see every day against Virtual World comes in, uh, then, yeah, as expected, uh, uh, it could be a, a really useful tool. So... Yeah, this means that he has already quite a few cars yeah, to combo. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, and uh, City comes down, Danilo is thinking about it. Uh, could ash it. Uh, I mean... Uh, it would be strange because you know your yeah. opponent at the at the time just uh, gets uh, such uh, an advantage and yeah seems uh, seems like we get to see the copy of what happened in game one once again uh, hopefully for Benjamin uh, this is gonna work out because it uh, it really didn't in game one so yeah if Danilo activates an hand trap uh, you just have the triple tactics talent uh, mm -hmm. to you know to respond to it. And now comes the GG. Yeah, nothing uh, too too crazy. So we see Queen Long being sent to the graveyard. And uh, do you think uh, if you are signing in, since a lot of people are actually mailing this weekend, Danilo included, uh, when is the correct time to use Artifact Lancia in this matchup? I think in the mirror match, I would uh, I would shotgun it. Okay. I think, uh, I think this is the best way, just to avoid cards such as uh, Part of Desire, uh, Part of Prosperity. You know, I mean, I would, uh, I would shotgun it. I think this is the best option, just in general. And if you know the, if you know the deck you are playing against, maybe I think this is an option you should consider anyway. So. Okay. Okay. And now, wow, uh, this was actually a really bad end from Danilo, uh, no matter what. So the Ash came down, but are you surprised that he used the, that effect of triple talent? Well, maybe, maybe just because he was scared of something else. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's paying I, off quite yeah, well. I think it's fine because uh, right now uh, I think I will shuffle back the Nibiru because uh, he already activated the Ash. And, yeah, and uh, he could not activate the Lao Lao unless he draws you know, a monster or a spell card. It depends if I mean that's why I'm surprised by it, like. If he bricked, then I think he would have used the talent to draw two. If he didn't, then I'm not sure what he's thinking about because Nibiru yeah, is 100% yeah. the, the choice here. That's why I'm thinking maybe bricked uh, and... Uh, or, I don't know. Yeah, that's why okay, he, he sends that's... back the monster. I mean, maybe there is also a chance that now Nibiru is there, he just plays for number 75. And that way Nibiru is not that relevant. But uh, I'm, I'm not sure if Danilo is going to be happy with this because now he needs a miracle off the top of the deck. Even if his opponent just ends his turn here, I cannot think of much. Yeah, let's see if Benjamin uh, <clears throat> has another monster or uh, it will simply pass. Let's see. Yeah, it seems like uh, he's going to cut his deck. Uh, maybe he doesn't have another play for the turn then. Quite possible. Um, which, let's see. I mean, he knows that his opponent doesn't have okay, anything. Yes, yeah, as expected. So, he didn't uh, have another play, so he passes, and now it's all or nothing. He really needs a pot, uh, or uh, not really sure what else he would need, because the rest of his hand was completely uh, dead. He had yeah, an Ash, yeah. an, Ib an Ibiru, and uh, the x one Wu, which... Yeah, I think the best card to draw in this part would be the Pot of Prosperity. Yeah. You, you could adjust your hand. Because he's not playing, probably the goods uh, is, yeah. is also decent, but yeah. I'm not even sure if you can do much with it, so... I I don't see uh, this going super well, and it just sets a card. It could be the x one who It could be this one who yeah. But uh, now Benjamin uh, is happy, at the same time he knows that Hiro and Anashi is there. 
So if he passed the next turn, it's quite possible that the Ash uh, could stop uh, any play. But I think he's he's, he's happy. Yeah. Like, I think you have to. Like be if happy. Ash comes down here, do you Ash this if you're Danilo? Uh, this is risky because if you don't Ash the GG, it could send another Chinglong in the grave. Okay. And uh, and then go for number yeah, seventy-five. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, maybe I would have Ashed it and uh, hope that. Uh, I, mean, I mean, hope to throw something out of, out of the deck because. Uh, yeah, could send the Chinglong, then go for mm -hmm. a 75, yeah. The only thing I'm concerned about is, since you have to banish for cost, uh, do you think it's ever possible that Benjamin banished the 75 for the pot? It's... I don't uh, think so. I mean, I probably wouldn't do so, yeah. but you never know. I mean, you, you still banish six yeah. cards, so... It's, it's always uh, interesting to see these decisions, because... I'm pretty sure the six cards that are getting banished are not always the same from player to player, so... But okay, now nothing too surprising. Uh, okay, maybe he sided out uh, the other copy of Queen Glong, uh, because I think he, in a first... He was going super fast, but then he realized it. I mean, at the same time, this is okay, because... GG can just uh, bring it back to the end in the end phase. Uh, <clears throat> but we're probably seeing him. Because this is something that you don't usually see. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh... Did he, did he just pass? No, he's, yeah, he's thinking about it and it seems like he's just gonna get back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so playing a grind uh, a grind mirror match, uh, now we get to see uh, Danilo just using his... Uh... Swan Hu? Yeah. Yeah, I think now Benjamin needs to... just needs to... Okay, maybe Danilo here was to activate a virtual war. Okay, now Benjamin, I think, is going to chain the the Chuche, maybe or not. Okay. Okay, so I mean, he could have activated the Chuche on yeah, this one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, As we can see, Chuche yeah. is yeah one of the key cards of this deck. Uh, Making it super annoying because you have to deal not only with monsters but with the trap uh, itself, uh, and yeah, it does pretty much everything you want from from a card. Uh, yeah, could have been correct. Uh, he, he knew the rest of his opponent end, so I'm surprised as well. He didn't uh, just destroy the. Well, maybe he doesn't. Maybe we're missing something that uh, he doesn't have to. Be sure what yeah, probably only has right? one card. Yeah. yeah. So. So now there is a chance for Danilo to fight back, uh, as he... yeah. Because we know one of the cards in Benjamin End is the Lulu. Yeah. But the other one is unknown for, and I'm still thinking back to the turn where he used the Triple Tactics talents at the beginning. Uh, maybe he rushed uh, a little since he didn't have a uh, follow-up play, and uh, he should have drawn... Uh, he couldn't draw uh, right away because of the prosperity, of course, but uh, not sure. It's uh, it's it's an interesting uh, choice to, and definitely an unusual way of uh, of seeing a mirror match here. What could he have said? Maybe I was one move? because he's, I don't think he's playing other uh, trap cards, right? Rather than that. Yeah, it should yeah. be should be the this strong rule. Maybe he sided uh, something, as we said, the Meshif of the Gnomes, but probably we, we would have seen him uh, before, so... It's looking good for Danilo, mm -hmm. that uh, was able to come back here. Maybe he goes for a Stardust Charge Warrior, let's see. Possible, I mean, this is uh, looking quite well for him. Yeah, Stardust Charge comes down, uh, giving... And uh, uh, this is... Uh, Tough, yeah, it because was, uh, it was able to come back. I mean, I was not expecting. It was a very no, close, close game. Yeah, Benjamin, unfortunately, seems like he was too slow. And uh, Danilo finally picked up the card, and he still has his uh, his hand chops. So, 
it's fighting back. You can see even just by Benjamin posture, uh, you rarely see a duelist with like crossed arms, uh, just laying uh, laying back. Uh, this is what we were seeing before because uh, in the previous turn, Benjamin decided to play conservatively. He sent the Lulu in order to add it back in the end phase. Yeah. But maybe if he would have uh, sent the Ching Long, now it would be okay because. Uh, so is Anibiru there? Okay, so the last card okay. once more uh, is Anibiru. It seems like uh, this tournament is already being uh, completely monopolized by Nibiru. And uh, once again, maybe we saw everyone playing uh, Lancia, but maybe they should have played uh, Nibiru instead uh, in the main deck. Uh, this changes uh, quite a lot, uh, although the fact that he only has one banish means that uh, Danilo could uh, just destroy his opponent uh, Shue with his own, yeah. cutting off uh, and uh, leaving him top decking because he only has the Lulu in hand. Yeah, and he has the Ash. So... Yeah. And the Nibiru of his own. So this is still looking better for Danilo, if I'm being honest, but definitely, definitely an open one and an unusual game uh, uh, nonetheless so they're counting once more uh, the attack and defense of the token i think it's this one is big as well absolutely <laughs> yeah it's a chunky boy so it's uh, it's gonna be tough to uh, to deal with especially because the trap is not active at the moment uh, wow, wow even the, the city the CD. So a follow-up is there uh, to get his own copy of Chue, I would say. Chuche, just you get the Chuche yeah. and uh, you use it to destroy your opponent uh, copy. Uh, meaning that the other set card from Benjamin could be a second copy of Chue. Okay. Then it gets interesting, but... And now Danilo has uh, the Ashen and the Biru in hand, mm -hmm. so it's very good. Yeah, still, uh, still looking good. Uh, definitely a grind. It's not something you would expect, uh, but I would say it's just, it's just fine. You, you don't use it here, right? You wait. Uh, if your opponent goes for the Lulu, you just chain the uh, Shue. Wait. It just uh, uh... used the. Uh, yeah, so he changed the position of the token with uh, his own. Uh, uh, Xuanu, but uh, then his opponent has. So, this is a, a old style uh, Yu Gi Oh in action right now. So, using uh, cards to change and switch uh, the attack uh, uh, and the position of, uh, on, of your opponent masters. As you can see, uh, now the draw is, uh, is quite relevant because Benjamin is stuck. So, if he goes to activate the Lulu, then his opponent can just chain the Chue, the Shushe on whatever is uh, is targeted, and he's gonna gonna be able to resolve. So he needs a solid uh, top deck, and uh, the same uh, though goes for Danilo because his graveyard I don't think is uh, is worth much at the moment. I think maybe uh, yeah, when he passed turn, he activated the GG, so he could get uh, another rich reward from the graveyard to the hand. Ooh, okay, you drew the city. Okay, the city is, is uh, on top deck. Uh... Okay, maybe okay. Maybe here Benjamin wants to first Danilo to activate the Ash, but I don't yeah. think anyway. I mean, there's no way. Danilo's... I mean, he can, because uh, if he goes for the Ash, then you have the response for the Lulu, and there's nothing more your opponent can do this turn. So would you activate the Ash Blossom here? Because the thing is, now uh, he also gets to activate the other effect of a city, which is the one you usually. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> don't see, uh, which is the one depending on how many cards there are face up on the field on your side. So he gets to mill three, I think. Uh, I don't mind the Ash here. It's yeah, I think uh, it's not great, but yeah. it's it's okay. The thing is, if your opponent gets the Queen Long, uh, then it can get complicated. Okay, Danilo is now considering what he could do because uh, he knows what he has. Yeah, let's see. It's not an easy, it's not an easy decision because game. So, what a tough one. Uh, 
I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's debating. Uh, I don't mind it. Because uh, you have full information, uh, like what's left for your opponent if you ask this. Uh, the Lulu, <clears throat> and you can destroy whatever target uh, there is. But it then gets quite complicated because if your opponent is smart, okay, the Ash comes down. Mm. No. Oh my god, <laughs> wow, this is the longest uh, <laughs> and painful Ash uh, I've seen uh, from Danilo. He's really, really, really thinking well about this, but uh, I think it's time he should choose uh, and pick his decision. So what I was thinking is if you target the um, the other uh, the other trap, the Xuan Hu, and as expected, the Danilo does receive a minor warning for uh, Zulu play. Because he has taken uh, way too much time. Okay, okay so Chushe. instead uh, he doesn't activate the Ash, but he chains the Chushe, destroying his opponent Chushe, which is quite uh, unusual, I would say. But I agree with not using the Ash yeah. because now you have a card that can 100% stop the the Lulu. The thing is, if you didn't, uh, then your opponent could have forced you to destroy uh, the uh, Swan Hu, and then you banish it, bring back something from the grave, and you can try and and find some solution. So, for now, uh, seems like uh, Danilo is playing okay, because now you go for Lulu, and Ash comes down, and I think you just end your yeah. turn. Yeah, this is a. Uh, Easy Ash Blossom from Danilo, and I don't think there is much that he can do at the moment, so... Uh, we are probably just gonna... I don't think he has anything he can... Yeah, he can activate in Grave, uh, he's gonna think about switching the Nibiru to defense or leaving it in attack, but... No, the only thing I was thinking that uh, maybe for normal summon the Lulu, punishing the Chuche. Mm -hmm. And then he has to virtual work as banished, you know? That's the only yeah. thing he could do. He does, so he, he doesn't think like he's gonna win uh, long enough. So he's gonna he's gonna try his best uh, to stay alive. Uh, but this is not enough uh, to push for uh, for game. Yeah, I think this is the only play he had. Because rather than that... Yeah, because we, we just saw the graveyard from Danilo and he, he does have a uh, Queen Long. Yeah. He uses the trap to switch. Uh, is it just gonna pass? I think so. Uh, yeah, I don't think he'll, he'll yeah, force the change. He doesn't use it. Okay. Yeah. So he's done. Uh, play go back to Danilo, who now pretty much only has to deal with the, his opponent Chuche. And outside of that, there is nothing uh, worrying. Lulu comes, uh, comes down. Uh, he plays well by selecting uh, the Xuan Wu. And I, I don't really see this going well for uh, Benjamin. Maybe the blue side is cursed right now, <laughs> and uh, it seems like the red uh, is gonna take it uh, uh, again, just like we saw in round one. So, whoever is coming up in round three uh, after these guys. Uh, <laughs> He's probably gonna be begging uh, to change uh, to change sides, but let's see. Okay, no response, and uh, yeah, the, the the advantage is getting out of hand, uh, and the problem is that he's quite good at uh, creating boards and grinding. But if your opponent finds a way to just clear everything, it's a terrible deck to be top decking with because it it requires at least two cards to yeah. work well. It doesn't require much, like with two cards, pretty much any two card combo you can do something, but one card only, it's uh, it's quite tough. I know, he gets the GG, and it's very difficult for Benjamin because he needs to consider when to activate the Chuche, mm -hmm. and also because the token is uh, huge. Yeah, the token alone uh, can almost wipe uh, his opponent life points out, and the only thing protecting uh, is uh, those two traps. 
Um, there is no Queen Long in graveyard for Benjamin, which is the big problem uh, that this game uh, created. And also, as a final lane leading the coffin, even if he was to completely top deck and uh, come back into the game, we know Danilo is holding Biro at the start of this duel, so... A lot of different options. Okay, he drew the Ching Long. Yeah, he... It's not gonna do much, but he can use it to banish one just to get uh, in the way of uh, making his own Chushi alive. For now, he's gonna re just rely on the GG and the advantage is uh, getting uh, absolutely out of hand. And now it's not gonna get easy for Benjamin because I think he's going to send the Chuche. Let's see. Yes, he sends the Chuche. And maybe uh, now he can do pretty much whatever he wants because. Uh... Yeah, I think. We could go for Stardust Charge War. We have a lot of different options here. We could go for Shenshen as well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Okay, oh, well, okay. You, you already yeah, as I said, uh, yeah, yeah, you already. So that's why he was not in any pressure. And now with the other Ching Long on the field, uh, he doesn't need uh, to find a way to banish a card even. So. And now you can push for game, I think, because he yeah. gets rid of the new people. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because now the Lao Lao there, I think... Okay, even another <laughs> Gamma, so yeah. He finds uh, the only the only thing he needs to worry about are the traps once more. And once the... Okay, now it's too late. So now the, the Shuche is, uh, is live, meaning his opponent. And since he, as you can see on the screen, uh, they both have Axe One Who, which uh, changes the position. It's essentially as if no one player uh, has Axe One Who. So I think uh, uh, the traps uh, essentially negate uh, themselves, which is a funny interaction uh, we are seeing here, especially because they are in the same columns. So it's uh, as if uh, you can pretend that the traps are not there at the moment. So. Uh, if the traps are not there, Danilo can easily win this game. So here you can use that to destroy the Nibiru if he wants, but I think... Uh... Yeah, I think right now he doesn't even have yeah. to worry about the Chuche because... Okay, so he destroys the Chuche, he shuffles back, uh, destroys uh, uh, even one more card. He has the Lao Lao. Yeah. Seems pretty tough. So what happened, I, I believe, is the very targeted the, the Chuche, then his opponent chained it, and he chained his own copy to destroy it. Uh, which I don't think was necessary, because... Why? No. Like, I hope yeah. uh, he can still game him some uh, regardless, which I'm pretty sure he can, but... You don't need to preemptively do it, because uh, you can always just chain your own copy yeah. to theirs, but... I guess he felt uh, he wanted to be super safe. Uh, and uh, again, I gotta say a great show of knowledge uh, of this deck. Danilo said that for this event by playing uh, Virtual World. So it isn't much of a surprise that he is still here uh, with the same deck. Probably even more experience with it. Somehow, when you compete in one of the qualifiers, you get to play against uh, pretty good uh, opponents. and. Now he's trying his best to just show the world that he can be our first champion for 2021. So, and it looks like uh, maybe he's pushing for game because. Uh... Okay, and now even uh, one of the cards that not every duelist is playing uh, today, and I think his opponent has seen enough. Uh, Benjamin picks up uh, his card, and the winner for round two is. Uh, Danilo and his Virtual World deck. So congratulations to him.